everyone. How's everybody doing? Hope you all are doing good. I hope you can hear me. Um, I definitely want to thank you for joining us. I hope you all can see us. Um, got a special guest tonight. Okay, I'm just not seeing our pictures. <laughs> Hoping we're good. <laughs> all right, so um. We have a special guest tonight. I want to introduce, um, there I am. I can see myself now. Okay. Hey, how's everyone doing? <laughs> so sorry. Uh, this is April Wagner, and I want to thank you for joining us um, in our Lifespan Matters group. Um, we have a very special guest tonight. Super excited about this. Um, we have Dr. Moshe Deckel, and I know he's joining us in a second. He's going to um, show his very handsome face. And, you know, he is somebody that I met, um, it's probably, close to 25 years ago, whatever, very fortunate. At that time, he was chief of obstetrics and gynecology at Good Sam Hospital in Long Island, New York. Very, very successful. I would say at that time, he'd probably been doing it for a little over 20 years at that point. Um, but you know, the, the late 1990s, he decided that he wanted to venture into holistic and anti-aging medicine. And let me tell you, he is just a wealth of information we are just so excited to, to have him with us um, tonight to really talk about how we can promote some breast health. You know, the statistics for women that, that get cancer are very high at this point. It's something like 13% of us, and we want to do our best to prevent that. So, Dr. Deckel, are you out there? Can we see you? Of course. How are you doing? Ah, there we go. Ta-da. <laughs> Ta-da. You probably can see me just because of this presentation, so. <laughs> oh, so how are you doing tonight? We're doing great, actually. Uh, I'm transmitting to you from uh, the great state of South Carolina, actually Hilton Head, where I'm blessed to be at this moment. And uh, I'm excited about our topic today because it's a, a topic that's very dear to my heart. It's, you know, as a board certified OBGYN and dealing with medicine for the last 40 years and 20 of them in, as a holistic doctor. So I'm looking forward to the conversation. Well, I can't think of anybody I'd rather have a conversation with. So. <laughs> you were just a wealth of information. And, and you know what's unique? You have both the traditional side and you have the holistic side. So you have all pros, you know, perspective of it. And so again, we're so thankful that you could be here tonight and you know, just share some of your information and insights on that. Excellent. Well, obviously you hit the nail on the head, so to speak, because breast cancer is one of the most fearful uh, cancer out there. Uh, and actually it's very pervasive. Uh, and as a holistic physician, my job is really to help my patients to actually not get the disease. In other words, conventional medicine is about, okay, let's find out as soon as possible that you have the disease. In other words, they say about early detection saves lives, etc. Well, my slogan is a little different. I say that early prevention saves lives. And what I'm going to talk about today is really how to prevent it. So let's talk a little bit about cancer. What is cancer? Cancer is not an organ disease. Cancer is a systemic issue, okay? It's a, an issue for the immune system that has lost the ability to recognize we have cancer cells in our body every day. And for multiple reasons, it cannot identify it or it cannot destroy it. So after years or months of not being able to eliminate the cancer cells we have in our body every day, all of us, we have, we're dealing with clinical cancer. So what do we need to do? Well, first of all, the most important part is that we can address is lifestyle. We are what we eat. I highly recommend to all my patients, men and women alike, to really cut down the carbs. And you say, why is it important? Well, it's important because cancer cells can only metabolize sugar. They cannot metabolize amino acids and cannot metabolize fatty acids. So obviously, any sugar and any carbs that become sugar is a potential fuel for the cancer. So mm -hmm. if, we get, if we adopt keto, ketogenic diet, ketogenic lifestyle, I like to call it, which means more. It means 
taking more fat, healthy fat, avocado, nuts and seeds, olive oil, coconut oil, uh, steak, fish, anything that is natural, anything that God put on earth for us, and man didn't touch too much of it. In other words, not processed. By doing that, we're actually also helping reducing inflammation. And we we'll talk about inflammation a little bit when we talk about other possibilities. But inflammation is the hallmark or the basis of all chronic diseases, including cancer, okay? So what we eat is absolutely very important. Number two, how we eliminate is very important because toxicity interfere with the ability of the immune system to keep us healthy. So what do, what do I mean by that? Well, drink enough water, consume about enough fiber. In holistic medicine, if we don't move our bowels in 24 hours, it's a medical emergency. And I'm sure some people say, really? Absolutely. Why? Because we are toxic, the toxicity gets reabsorbed, the liver and the other elimination channels have to, extra, to work extra hard to put it out again. And I'm telling you right now, anybody with history of cancer, if you look at their history of bowel cleansing, bowel movements, they're usually very slow. In other words, I people say, you know, I move my bowel, because it's a simple question. How often do you move bowel? Once a week. And they see my face and say, well, I've been like this all my life. I said, well, that doesn't make it right. So that's very important. Elimination, a lot of water because the kidneys are very important to reduce toxicity. Also using what? Infrared sauna, reduce toxicity to the skin. Coffee enema is a great way to unburden the liver. And again, for some of you who did not hear about coffee enema, very easy to search, you do it at home. I know it sounds like crazy, but it works, believe me. Let's talk about stress. Stress interfere with the immune system's ability to protect us. You say, well, everybody has stress. You're absolutely right, especially these days. But what I'm saying to my patients is very simple. The body can handle any amount of stress as long as once every 24 hours, you go back to the green side, kind of eliminate it, let it go. Start from scratch again. As long as we don't stay on the red side of stress, we're good. So whatever puts a smile on your face, it can be just walking with the sunset, watching the breeze, watching the waves, watching the birds, listening to music, whatever it is. And here we come to one of the most important things in keeping health is sleep. Because how many people are insomnia? They go to sleep because they are tired and then two, three o'clock in the morning, they're awake. They didn't shut the what? The video, they didn't shut the tape, they didn't shut the computer. And continues to run the loop about what happened yesterday, the disaster at work and what's gonna happen to them tomorrow, or with the kids, or with the husband, or with the wife, whatever the case may be. And we need to tell the body, okay, 11 o'clock I'm in bed, I'm not gonna wake up until six, I'm gonna sleep well. And I suggest to my patients just three simple mantras. Number one, to say loud before you go to sleep, I forgive myself. And some people say, mm. self-forgiveness, I know you're smiling. Self-forgiveness is a daily exercise. Okay, number two, I'm going to have a great night's sleep. Make it a statement to your body. You're telling your body, I'm going to have a great night's sleep. Number three, one of the most important part is, tomorrow is another day. Shut it down. Especially, don't sleep with the phone, shut it down, no television. The body repairs when it sleeps. If it doesn't sleep, it doesn't repair. Well, you can imagine what happens if it doesn't repair. In holistic medicine, sleep is more important than food. Look at this one up. So we talked about that. We talked about diet, etc. Emotions. Emotions are paramount. And what I mean by that, a lot of us are 
keeping hold on emotions that are not good for us, whether it be anger, sadness, being depressed, whatever the case may be. What I'm telling my patients is the following. Emotions are like waves. They come and they go. They come and they go. But if we hold to any emotions, let's assume it's anger, or whatever the case may be, and we hold on to it, because why? We are angry. We, we need to do something about this, and we don't let it go. It don't stay with us as long as we hold on to it. Let it go. Anger is a survival emotion. We can be angry just to protect ourselves. In five minutes, five seconds, let it go. Do something about it or eliminate it. So emotions are very, very important. Uh, a lot of patients, I haven't found any cancer patient, breast or otherwise, that does not have an emotional stress. Whether it be a relationship, whether it be grieving over the loss of a loved one, whatever the case may be. And I'm not saying it's easy, but we need to be cognizant that being in a low vibration emotion, like anger, or sadness, uh, is not good for the immune system. So that's very important. By the way, if you have any questions, just jump in. Because I, I don't want it to be a monologue. I don't I want it to be... the whole emotional side. I, I, I don't want it to be a monologue. And, and by the way, I mean... No, if, if, I, I like... If any, if any of, the, of the viewers want to send you a question, just let me know. That's okay. It's not a problem. It's kind of ad lib. It's not, it's not structured. Okay. Anyway, so... Yeah. So we talked about that, and now let's talk about uh, what else can we do in order to prevent the disease, okay? The conventional medicine is telling you, do mammography every year of a certain age, et cetera. Uh, the problem is the following. Mammography comes with radiation and compression. So every time we do mammography, we increase our chance of breast cancer by one to 2% per study. They don't tell you that. Really, they don't tell you that. But it's all in the literature. And if you need any citations, I'll be happy, I'll be happy, to, I'll be happy to send it to you. So when we are in, in, in a process of prevention, what I recommend is thermography, breast thermography. Breast thermography is very simple. It's done with infrared camera. So there's no compression, no radiation, okay? And it actually looks at the temperature changes in the breast. We can then assess the risk factor that we have. In other words, do we have normal temperatures? Do we have abnormal? And if so, by how much? And then what I do, is I give really a protocol that I call prevention protocol to make sure that, let's say, in, we do repeat it in six months or so, we see it going back to normal, okay? One of the main things that we need to be addressing is hormones, okay? Hormones have to be within balance between estrogen, progesterone, okay, testosterone, DHEA, et cetera. So we also look into that. Women, as they progress in age, they become what we call estrogen dominant. What it means is that the progesterone starts to decline in the 30s, way before menopause. Now, the estrogen is a building hormone. It's a stimulating hormone. It, take, it tells the breast to what? Get ready for pregnancy, to the uterus, get ready for pregnancy, okay? Progesterone appears around two weeks into the cycle, and it, what it does, it tells the estrogen to stop the stimulation, to overgrow, preventing overgrowth. Now, what happens if we have low progesterone? Well, now we have estrogen dominance, and it causes what? Cystic breast, it can get uh, uh, fibroids, polyps, and on and on and on. So again, this is one of the things we do to make sure that women who have low progesterone get natural bioidentical progesterone to equalize the estrogen progesterone ratio. In addition to the thermography, I also recommend ultrasound, breast ultrasound. It has no radiation, no compression, and it looks at the breast from the anatomical point of view because MRI, mammography, ultrasound looks at the anatomy, lumps, cysts, etc. Thermography looks at physiology, okay? I want an anatomical way of looking at the breast 
to compare to the physiologic, and now I know that I'm on the right path and I can assure my patient that everything is fine, okay? So again, tomography and ultrasound give us a very good idea where we stand and how we need to proceed, okay? And the BRUSH protocol contains about 27 different items, some of them I already mentioned, to mention some other uh, important part of the protocol, we have to make sure that iodine is on top. We, iodine is very important. Selenium is very important. Vitamin C is very important. Okay. Uh, so that's on the surveillance side. Uh, another point about mammography, the yield or the, the true finding of mammography is pretty low. It's only about 65%. So for women to think that if they do mammography, they're home free, mm -hmm. not so. Not only that, because mammography shows certain areas that, not, that are not absolutely 100%, the radiologists read it as suspicious because nobody, no doctor was, that I know was sued because of doing unnecessary biopsy. Mm -hmm. A lot of doctors were sued because they didn't do a biopsy. So as a result of this, so we, we do about, yeah, go ahead. Is it true with mammography, we're going to see something going on earlier than a trad traditional mammogram? Absolutely, because the physiology changes six years before anatomical changes. Sometimes, some people say 10 years. So we can see early changes demographically, energy-wise, fix them with a protocol and not even get, ever get to the point from, oh, my health, I have a problem. That makes sense? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. So uh, what else? So now we talked also about, we, start, we talked a little bit about, about inflammation. So the main root or the main cause of inflammation is really the gut, okay? And the gut depends, the gut condition depends on what? What we eat, how we digest, how we eliminate, okay? So obviously I recommend low carb, a lot of people are sensitive to gluten, a lot of people are sensitive to dairy. If those, for those of us who love dairy like me, I recommend what? Goat. Goat cheese, goat milk, almond, coconut. There are many, many other possibilities other than, than, than milk. Unless, unless you have, the best milk is actually raw milk, but from cows who are actually consuming hay, not corn. It's available to some co-ops. If it's, if it's there, you can probably do all right with that. But other than that, I would, start, I would suggest to, to stay away from it. Number two, we need probiotics, very important, okay? And again, one of the products we're gonna talk about is probiotics, but, and also we need digestive enzymes. Most of us need to digestive enzymes. By doing that, we are actually eliminating or really keeping under control a condition it's called leaky gut syndrome. Leaky gut syndrome is the increase of the permeability of the Spaces between the cells, they kind of open up a little bit in the gut, allowing stuff to go through they're not supposed to go through, thereby creating inflammation. You say, what's so big, what's so bad about inflammation? Well, acute, meaning on the spot inflammation, the body uses for prevention, not prevention, but actually fighting bacteria, viruses, parasites, etc. Perfectly fine. We're talking about chronic inflammation. Inflammation lasts for weeks and months and years and decades. That is the kind of boiling pot that can go any place in the body and create a problem. It goes to the joints, we have arthritis. It goes to the heart, we have heart disease. It goes to the brain, we have Alzheimer's. It can go any place. And of course, it affects the immune system in such a way that it's less capable of identifying cancer cells and get rid of them. Okay, so uh, before we close, I, I just would like to uh, talk a little bit about the, the products that I find that are helpful for my patients and myself including. So we talked about, a lot about inflammation. Well, 
it so happened that you and Bobby were nice enough to introduce to me the NRF3, but it, believe it or not, it's almost three years. It's unbelievable. It goes very quickly. <laughs> and I remember when they came to my house in Hilton Head, they talked to me about the product. I said, you know, guys, I have about 80 different products in my shelf. They all work great. I'm not looking for any, any more products. How many products can you have? They say, okay, but before you say no, why don't you look it up at PubMed? That got my curiosity up, and I started reading about it. And when I read that, that NRF2 actually decreases oxidative stress by 40% in 30 days, I said, well, I don't have any problem like that. And I started consuming it and obviously offering it to my patients. And on a personal level, my memory got better. I remember names better and items better. And it's, it took me this seven months. And when I realized, I said, what, what, what changed? Because that's the only thing that changed. That's the only supplement I added. So in my opinion, that's a, that's a no-brainer. Another, another product that I believe is very helpful is the NRF1, pretending, which is one. It actually supports the mitochondria to make more energy. Now, everything in the body depends on energy. The immune system needs energy. Every system in the body needs energy. If we have enough energy, not only we're not fatigued, we're active, et cetera, but we are healthier. So I would definitely want something like that in my body to create, create more ATP, that's the energy molecule. The third one is the NAD. It's the abbreviation of the catenamide adenine dinucleotide. I know it's a mouthful, but let's make it simple. NAD is a molecule that is absolutely important to make ATP, the energy molecule, in the mitochondria. That's number one. If there's not enough NAD, we don't make enough energy. But when we have extra amount of NAD, what it does, it increases the survival gene called sirtuin 2 that actually goes to the DNA and repairs it. Well, one of the theories of cancer is what? Disruption of DNA. It's a no-brainer. Again, we, we also have the, the probiotic, which is absolutely important. I'm telling my patient, you take nothing, take probiotics. By far, by far. We have about 95 trillion yeah. cells. We have 10 times more bacteria in the gut. So if we do, it, let's assume we go to the airport and instead of this metal detector, we have a cell count detector and we go through, it's gonna say that we're 90% bacteria and 10% human. Crazy, but it is. So everything that happens in the gut affects everything. So the right diet, the right digestion, the right, what we call the microbiome, which is really bacteria in the gut, is absolutely essential for, for breast health, for just good, healthy life. Very good, that's good. I, I think I covered everything, but if you have any questions, please, please ask. Yeah, you know, I um, you know, some things that I've heard over time, you know, vibration plates, um, good, um, underwire bras, bad. You know, what about some of that 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 general stuff that we can kind of even more relate to? Because we've well, talked about a lot emotional, and we've talked about what we can ingest, but I think outside influences. Well, could we, also hurt. I forgot to mention one, one very important thing, which is exercise. Uh, yes. You know, the vibration of the plate is, is absolutely, I mean, it's easy. It's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and it's the equivalent of almost an hour in exercise. So for all of us who are busy, whether it be at home or at work, et cetera, you know, jump on it for 15 minutes. Absolutely great. Any kind of, and, and I like to walk outside any kind of, you know, walk outside for an hour. It's beautiful. I mean, it's getting a little chilly up north, but you know, it's still okay, right? I hear the weather's pretty good over there. In fact, I'm going to be Sorry. in New York. In, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be in New York next Wednesday, so I'm, I'm bringing my jacket. But you're absolutely right. You know, the, you know, there's, there's obviously there's much more than what we spoke about. Not much more. I, we talked about the essential, but everybody has a little different nuances of what's happening in their life. But I, I, I strongly believe that if they address everything we talked about. I don't think they have cancer in their future. I really don't. 
Well, that's exciting. And I can't thank you enough for, for joining us and sharing all that. And the emotional part, I never really, I know to be positive, but I never thought about, you know, at night, just leaving it all there. So that's awesome. Very important. Let me give a couple of suggestions, not just but true stories. It's pretty amazing to see women developing breast cancer within two years of losing a child, messy divorce, losing parents and not being able to grieve and release it. Absolutely, it's emotional. And the breast, what? It's love. Go right to the breast. Mm -hmm. But again, it's systemic. It's not the issue of the breast. It's everything we spoke about. In that point, manifest in the breast. It can be in the uterus, it can be in the prostate, it can be any place, it can be in the liver. It doesn't make any difference. Everything we spoke about today, other than, of course, the best tomography and the breast ultrasound, etc., pertains to everything in general. Mm -hmm. Great, good. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming in the group and sharing so much with us. And I hope you have, you'll come back another time and when we shift a different topic or what subjects. So. Absolutely. If there's a popular demand for holistic doctor's uh, corner or whatever you want to call it, yeah, we can do it. Listen, I believe that one of the most important part of my being a physician is to, to teach what I know. Oh, I do it for fun. Good. Well, I'm glad you're continuing to educate us all and can't thank you enough. Thank you for inviting me and have a great <laughs> evening. And good health to everybody. You too. Oh, that's so nice. Same to you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Take Bye. Bye-bye.